What is up, 8% Nation? Happy Wednesday evening. I'm Cody Askins, and I am excited for tonight's special guest, Mr. Sam Wolf, president and managing partner of AmeriLife HPS Home Protection Services. That's the mortgage protection and final expense division and entity. Mr. Sam, I do. We, we, we've went, we've been, uh, we've talked for what the last year or two a little bit, getting to know each other a little bit. Yeah. Um, I think that we first spoke uh, last year, um, maybe maybe a year ago, and so. uh, you know it was an interesting conversation, our first conversation. But yeah. you know, I think the first conversation we had, I was just congratulating you on where you were at um, with you. everything back then, and you know it's been pretty amazing just to see from probably nine months ago, and eh, maybe maybe nine to ten months ago, but. But, you know, less than a year ago, um, what you've been able to do in 2018, which is really awesome. Thank you, buddy. I appreciate the kind words, man. So for those that don't know, Sam is a panel speaker at this conference on the same stage as Ray Lewis and Grant Cardone in Nashville at Nissan Stadium. So we're extremely excited to have Sam not only a part of this event, his company a part of this event, but to have him on the panel with a lot of good dudes answering questions for our attendees. Sam, for those that don't know, uh, uh, and I appreciate you being on, buddy. Thank you so much. Sure. For those that don't know Sam Wolf, and you've been around the industry for, for quite a while. I, I think a lot of people know who you are by now. If they don't, give them a little background about you just so they can kind of get to know you and, and, and your, uh, your story, man. Sure. Yeah, absolutely. And without going into too much detail. Um, so I... And it's kind of weird because I'm, I'm 37 now. And I remember 10 years ago, I think I was roughly about, about your age. Okay. And um, so yeah. uh, it's, it's, it's interesting how fast time goes by in general. But in this business, by the blink of an eye, it's 10 years later, 15 years later. So um, I actually started in the – you and I have, from what I've, what I've learned about your background, you and I have a similar – um, introduction into the insurance business through our, through our parents, yeah. um, you know, through, through my, uh, actually through my stepdad. And, um, so I actually, uh, when I was 16, uh, I would, I actually worked in his, in his, he, had, he owned an IMO. Um, uh, he started back in, in the eighties. And, uh, by the time, you know, I was 16, he was, he was pretty big nationwide. And, uh, and he had a big, Telecenter uh, telephone room where they made appointments for uh, the the agents that were in the in the teacher market in the TSA four hundred three B market. Okay, and so that was really my first job, um, and as a telemarketer making appointments. So they did the leads uh, to the schools back then, and uh, the leads would come back and they would be handed out every day um, in the telemarketing room and. And that's really where I started in, in the business um, when I was 16, making appointments. <laughs> wow. Wow. So, yeah. So you really, uh, you really learned the business at, at, at an early age, man. That's, uh, I don't think that's know, I, I didn't know it then. I, I knew how much money it could generate, but, you know, I didn't know it. I, I knew how to get a script and make an appointment, and I was good at it. Um, they gave bonus bucks um, at the end wow. of the day, and... I would always get my five or ten dollars uh, bonus, mm -hmm. or I would shoot for it, and people thought it was kind of weird. I was so aggressive and hungry, even at sixteen, uh, right. to to do well. And and you know my you know they knew my my you know my dad uh, was the one who uh, you know owned the business. He picked me up at night at eleven o'clock as well. So wow, kind of funny. <laughs> so Dude, if I, if I if I got dropped off there, or if I had you know if I didn't have my car or whatnot, but. Um, I think I wrecked my car when I was 16, so I was out of a car for most of the year. Um, so I remember being dropped off a lot. <laughs> right. well, what, what was it about? Uh, well, at 16, or when you did, did you know? When did you know? Because I think it was I, I kind of always tinkered with the idea of ending up in the industry. How, how was it for you? Did you know? Hey, this is for me. Were, were you not sure? When, or when did you? Know? You know, I I all in my family. Um, you you could be a lot of you could be a doctor you could have a master's degree that was all great but if you were a great salesman in our family you 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 were you were on the top of the of the totem pole i mean I you, you got all the recognition you got all i mean so being being a being a high end, high producing high income earning 
salesman was more important just in general. Cause my whole family was in, ha, is in this business. I mean, from uncles to, you know, parents to now my sister and my brother-in-law and so wow. we're all kind of, you know, segmented up in our own deals now, which is a, is a good thing because we used to all be tied together um, with one company for a long time. And, um, um, and sometimes that works good and sometimes it doesn't, you know, but, uh, sure. but I, 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 I did get introduced really where I was getting a paycheck in the insurance business when I was 16. Wow. That, that's amazing. There's not too many that can say that, but that there's uh so, so, so w w when did you start out in the field selling? So I got my insurance license in 2002. Huh? And, um, uh, so, you know, my goal was to, um, and actually I was working in, in Equita's office you know, off and on up until then. So either in the administrative department or, you know, administrative jobs. Right. And my goal, my goal in life was number one, to, to do well financially, but to almost prove myself a little bit, even at 21 or 22, however old I, old I was. So I went to college for a couple of years, hated college, hated school. To this day, you couldn't pay me to go back to college. I mean, <laughs> it, it's just one of those things that I, 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 well, I came home for the summer um, and I actually ended up, you know, I was working in, in the office um, and, and while I was working, there, I was working on getting my insurance license. So I ended up getting my insurance license um, and I'm not a studious person. I'll be the first one to admit that anybody who works with me, works for me, they know that I'm visionary, you know what I mean? I'm motivation. I'm, you know, let's drive the ship. But when it comes to uh, really being an administrator, I was terrible at it. Just horrible. I'm sure that, you know, just not good. And, uh, you know, so, um, but I ended up getting my insurance license and went out in the field as a T as a, uh, 403B agent. And so, uh, I learned, I got trained, learned how to, uh, go visit with teachers and basically be on the other end of the phone call, uh, where I used to make appointments. Now I'm taking the appointments mm. and go into the schools, meeting with the teachers and, um, and then if I'm not able to do a one call close, usually there were two call closes because a lot of teachers have f other four or three B plans. So you want to roll that money into another, uh, into another plan. So I'd, I'd make a second appointment usually and go to the meet at their house. And then we go through a whole financial strategy with them on how they can retire and not have to go get a job after they retire and supplement the retirement gap with a TSA. And, um, and then I would also sell, uh, at that time, they used to have a tax qualified whole life product that was payroll that would come out of their paychecks. It was payroll deductible and payroll deduction. And, um, and it was actually a qualified life insurance plan. So they don't, I don't even think they have those anymore. And they were 10 year pay up plans. Um, so I literally right out the gate, I was just so hungry. And in the first year I made well over a hundred thousand uh, dollars. Wow. No. Dang, so that. after that, you know, I was, I was like, okay, this is, this is, I'm, I'm in love. I'm married to, the, you know, in every way, you know, I mean, I'm just, I see, I, I see a future. I see so, so, so many, you know, so many great things. And I said, I'm never going back to college. <laughs> <laughs> and um, so, and, you know, and that was really when I when I fell in love with it, really, truly fell in love with the business uh, because I was out on my own. I was closing deals myself. And um, and that's just where where I fell in love with the business. Now, that was you know, I've been in the field a few times since then. Now, I'll be the first one to admit it. Not much. Uh, it's been since You know, I did that for about a year and a half. And then in 2003, um, I, I was given an opportunity to start a mortgage protection uh, IMO, and uh, so the company, uh, the family company that I was that I was with, um, they and it was called Equit. I'll say it here, so you know those of you who know. So Equita Financial. Um, so uh, they were wanting to take the company into a few different directions. They had their senior annuity division uh, where they did seminars for seniors, and they were doing probably a hundred million a year in annuities back then wow. in that market. Um, and then they were in the teacher market and, um, and they were, they were definitely the leaders. I believe the leader in the teacher market at that time in California and Texas, I know Americo, uh, they were their top IMO for, for forever. 
And, um, but then uh, uh, the mortgage protection, you know, the mortgage boom in the early 2000s uh, really started, you know, saying, okay, there was a, there was a market there. And, um, and I was out in the field selling, loving life, had freedom. <laughs> right. And, and I was brought into a meeting actually with Americo at the time they were visiting and they were going through what's still around the home mortgage series product. Right. And, uh, and they introduced this back in 2002, 2003. And I sat down in it and after they left, uh, Rick, who's my stepdad, he said, all right, let's, let's figure out a way to be able to, to build some distribution, get some marketing going and start doing some business in the mortgage protection market. I said, I don't know anything about the mortgage protection market. And uh, I never sold it anyway. Right. And um, so actually what, what happened was is that we went out and we acquired um, a small mortgage protection agency um, that wasn't doing a whole lot, had a talented uh, uh, founder principal who was running it, who um, is really the guy I would say who taught me the mortgage protection, mortgage protection uh, business. His name's actually Tommy Aiken, if you're watching. Okay. So it's a long time ago. I haven't talked to you in years, but um, so he, he was the one who came into the mix and showed us the, um, the ropes with that particular market at the time. And, you know, no offense or anything to him, but there was a lot of things that there was, there's reasons why that business wasn't growing. And, and I figured those things out over the, over, over about a, going into the hole, about a million dollars. Mm. And, uh, you know, so after about three years, you, you know how it goes. I mean, it takes capital, right? So, no doubt. Um, so we, we went in the hole, probably a million dollars in, in, in the first three years. And 2006, we came out of it all in one year. <laughs> and, um, yeah, so, yeah. So, you know, it, and then from 2006, 2010, we, we, we were, we were doing very well and, um, you know, well over 2 million a month, um, in, 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 in mortgage protection premium. And, um, and then, yeah, so basically, you know, that's my first 10 years in the business, I would say. Nice. And then in 2000, in 2000, um, in 2008, 2009, I started feeling like that I had outgrown the, the original deal that I had uh, I had received I would say when I was back in 2003 and so that was when we really kind of sat down and you know I, I wanted some things on the corporate end to to change more and more in my benefit hmm. and um, and I don't know if I had the same vision as as the other people and so but I knew what I I had brought to the table I respected what resources they brought to the table completely and uh and that was clear i don't think there was any confusion there but it was time for me to either grow out or renegotiate what our particular deal was yeah and remember there's this is a family family business so right <laughs> so there, you know so uh i got you okay yeah dang wow that's very cool so so, so okay so What's kind of always what's always attracted you about the because there's a lot of different panel speakers, speakers, keynote speakers at this event, at this conference, lots of different questions, lots of different experience levels, different different parts of the industry. What's it always been about mortgage protection that because, you know, dude, you can tell you, you freaking love mortgage protection. What was it about that 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 you've always enjoyed? You know, um, a lot of it just has to do with you know, we're kind of creatures of habit. Sure. And so I, that was what I really became successful with. And that, that it's hard to, it's hard to pivot or change completely from, from, from a business that you've become over the years successful in. And even though the market changes, Right. For the worse in a lot of ways, you know, especially on the mortgage protection. Um, I've still, even to this day, I've still stayed loyal to that market. I believe in it. I believe it's, it's great for the clients. I, it, it's, it's gotta be, it's, it, it's not a market that I see on the direct mail side and I'm still working on some, I'd be interested to learn at the conference, um, some other marketing tactics. Cause I know there's, there's one guy that, I think, uh, that's going to be there that I believe he's more on the technology side and he does mortgage protection. I mean, I think he's based out of here in Dallas, but I'd like to network a little bit and figure out, you know, some maybe possible different connections on how we can 
do some marketing. So right now I spend a lot of money on direct mail. I put the mail out, wait for the leads to come back in. I'm taking the risk on the lead returns. Um, the lead returns on the mortgage protection in general are very low. Uh, they're not, you know, these, you know, 1.5% return rates, 2% rates. They're just not. And well, well, what, so, what, what's an average M MP down in your area? For, for the letters that we use, which are, you know, in my opinion, very high, high quality letters we require a signature on the, on the lead. They, they put the date on the lead. Um, we average probably eight tenths of a percent on the, in general, in the more saturated metropolitan areas, they'll go up to 1%, 1 percent, 1.2, 1.3% in some of the more rural areas. But, you know, where the population is, is where your average is. So, you know, yeah. I would say if I average them all together, maybe, maybe just, just south of 1%, um, you yeah. know, in some areas it's even lower. And I, and I, if, unless I've got just an unbelievable closer there, I, I it's hard right. to keep the mail, the mail going out. But in general, I, I have some areas that I get a very low lead return, half a percent, but I've got an agent there who closes almost everything that they get. That's so That's there's awesome. just different variables in place to determine if I'm going to stay in there or not. No doubt. Uh, what, 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 what will agents learn? Not only the chance to, to meet you, hang out with you, get to pick your brain, um, just the, 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 all the networking that's going to happen is going to be incredible. But w what do you expect for agents to be able to learn from you being on stage, being a part of the panel? You, you may not know, you're not going to know what the questions are yet, but right. generally, what do you expect them to learn from you knowing your background, your history, what you're great at? You know, I, I think there's 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 a lot of different things to learn in, in your conference. Um, I, I don't think, you know, and I, that's one of the things we talked about earlier is, you know, yeah. I think that a lot of this business is is motivation. And some people are like, oh, I don't want to hear motivation. But, you know, you've really got to stay excited even through tough times in this business to stay in this business. That's why, you know, going back to the theme of 8%, well, yeah. you know, nice, that's a 92% fall off, which to me – 8% seems even a little high. Yeah. So I was surprised when you said that because I was thinking it might be 1% or 2%. Especially in the, in the life space, it's probably worse. Worse. This is kind of worse. But yeah. It, it's worse. It's worse. And 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 so, um, you know, I think that, you know, I've, I've been doing this. I've had two. Now I'm on my third company. Um, so I had Equita and then I started Unique Underwriters in 2010, took it public and sold it in 2014. Um, there's a whole story behind all of that and, and lessons and successes and all of that, just with that statement alone, which I, I'm not going to get into on this call, but, Absolutely. um, but the, the, there's a lot of, there's a lot of, I would, I would say I would have a lot of wisdom from being through what I've been through in this business. And one of the things that when you talk to people that have been with me and a lot of people that have been with me, been with me for years, 10 years plus. Uh, here with my Amerilife company. And um, so they transitioned over with me um, after I'd sold my, my, previous, my previous company. And one of the things I've heard that was really interesting that I didn't even think about, and we were at one of my conferences and, and I just, it was kind of a theme. My wife comes up to me and she's like, you know, I've noticed a thing. And they're saying you're, you're very tenacious. You're, you're, you have a lot of tenacity. And, um, but you're always, always like excited. <laughs> so, right. um, you know, and if, if there's so many, there's so many things to be excited about financially in this business, um, you know, in general, but there's, it's not always sunny. No, it's not no. always, you know, there's, and, and a lot of times I always tell people, I said, where there's glitter doesn't always mean they're gold over there. So, uh, or even here at times, you know, yeah. so, um, it, it's about just being tenacious in this business and staying positive and plugging in to the right mentors. There's, and I'll admit there's some wrong mentors out there sure. that are not going to lead, lead people in the right direction. And what I, what really turned me on about when you, the first day, I think you announced this conference, cause I don't know if I was one of the first people that said something to you, yeah, but, no. um, was I, I see a lot of positivity with what you're doing and, and it's not IMO specific. You know, I've done many, many conferences for my own companies, um, in the past. And, um, you know, there's a reason for that. Right. Yeah. I'm doing it for a reason. You know, we want to get people, you know, motivated and, and hungry and get that nice shot in the arm for the next until the next conference. Right. And, you know, so they're, they're really leaning towards motivation and recognition. Um, but, 
yours was a little different. I haven't seen one like yours. Yours to me is, is what I, what I've wondered, why hasn't anybody, including myself, um, <laughs> you know, networked and through a insurance conference for, for the, you know, and I, and I think the age, there's an age bracket within your conference. There's yeah. an age theme. I don't think that, you know, your 60 or 70 year olds are going to be so excited about, you know, coming to the conference, but that's not our, the future. So, um, you know, the millennials, you know, the people in their twenties and thirties and, yeah. and, and the, the smart ones in their forties that are looking farther than, you know, just the next lead they get. Um, sure. I think that that's where there is a lot of value, um, a lot of value that this conference is going to bring. And the panel that you've put together um, is a mixture of a lot of different talents yeah. that is very interesting. And I think that there's a lot of people from a brand new agent who doesn't know anything to an agent who is, you know, I've got Christine Butcher, who's actually my top agent last year. She, with her own pen, she made $600,000. She wrote like 700 applications and um, Ridiculous. she's, she's coming with me and she's bringing her team that she, she didn't, she's, she used to have a big agency back with my old organization, but she was kind of wanted to not do that at, with, with, with my mayor life deal. So she just wanted to go out and sell and I just beat her with leads. And she's, she's just been amazing, but she's decided now that she wants to uh, uh, have an agency. And so she's now got a handful of, Top producing agents. It's amazing how that works. Yeah. How, how a top producer, they, they, they create other top producers. Top producers, yeah. And so they're coming with her as well. And um, so from, from there's going to be a ton of value that I think Christine's going to be able to apply towards growing her business mm -hmm. with other people um, and different opportunities rather than just being so mortgage protection specific. I think that she can, you know, somebody like her who's been in the business almost as long as me, um, she, she can diversify into some other markets. Um, you know, I'm bringing Matt Joyce, who's, who's a marketer, one of my marketing managers who works actually for AmeriLife as well. Yep. He, um, he's coming. He's got a lot of telesales experience. Um, uh, and we're, we're, we're doing deals constantly with call center. One of, I would call them wannabe future call centers that yep. we, can, we can help them with, you know, the different experiences that we've had and, you know, uh, yep. and then, you know, and just have creating resources and, and, and networking and opportunities is really where I see a lot of value for everybody who's coming. And Thank you, I've been, I haven't just been invited everybody that I, you know, I've, I've handpicked and said, okay, I think you'd be a good, a good fit to come. And I've actually invited a, f a few people that, you know, um, aren't directly with me right now that I would like to be. Sure. Um, at some point. So, you know, I'm planting yeah. a seed and, um, and it could be a real positive way just to get around the mojo. And um, so some of the names that are possibly coming, you'll, you'll see, and you'll know who, who they are and cool. it'll be very interesting um, uh, if, if, if we can get some of their, some of their names to pop up. That's awesome. That's really cool, man. Yeah. You've, uh, you've, you've definitely got a good team. We've always, you know, we've always had a, had a good relationship and I'm extremely excited to finally get to meet you and get to hang out a little bit. Um, if, if an agent's on the fence, help them out. Like the event is, it's coming up quick, 22 days, five hours, 35 minutes and 30 seconds from now at an NFL stadium with, with all these dudes, yourself and a lot of other good dudes. If an agent's on the fence, number one, we're sold out of VIP, better than mm -hmm. it. But if agents are on the fence, what would you say to help them get over the fence? Like why should an agent attend? Well, there's only a few reasons why an agent has not pulled the trigger yet. Um, hmm. In my opinion, uh, one of them is they don't understand that they're going to have to invest in themselves to be successful. Wow. So the, the agents that have that, that are within the 8%, I'm going to say 2% because I've always been on the life for the most part, except for the, when I was in selling annuities to teachers when I was 22 or whatever. Right. Um, but the, the agents that are not willing to invest in their, in, in, in not just leads, but also personal development, hmm. um, they're, they're, you're, you're not going to be an eight percenter very long. You're going to fall into that 92% category. That's a fact. Yeah. Um, and so that would be one, one of the reasons why, because they, they can't, they're allocating, it's just like when you're meeting with a client, they don't want to buy an insurance policy. 
you know they have the money. You just haven't sold them on, you know, completely yet. They're not, they're not sold. So no. if you walk out without an app, you didn't sell them. So they're going to go put the money somewhere else, you know? So an agent, if you're, if you're, if you're saying I can't come because I can't afford whatever the ticket price, the guest ticket is not even, you know, the premier or VIP, but yeah, you're already sold out of those, but the guest ticket, a couple hundred bucks. You know, yeah. I think, yeah. I don't think you're, I don't think you're, you're, you're a 92 percenter. You're a 92 percenter. You're not an eight percenter is, isn't, is, doesn't even blink at $400. Right. You know, in, in, in my, in my world, an agent, you know, they're, they're dying and our leads are, in my opinion, from where I started in the business, I used to give leads out for free to the agents. Now they pay for them. And then the prices just keep going up as the lead returns go down. They're begging, still begging for them. And so in my world, that might equate to, that might equate to uh, one of your admission tickets might be eight or nine leads. So you're saying you're not willing to buy eight or nine leads to go out and make, you know, turn that into a, oh. into a, a profit. Um, so oh. I would say if it's, if it's financial, then, and, and you can't, and you don't see the value in investing in yourself and seeing the, the, what, what you could learn and, and specifically not from just, you know, the, the, the guest speakers, which are amazing with Grant Cardone and, and Ray Lewis, but you know, that's all like, to me, that's gravy. That's, that's, that's icing on the cake. I'm not coming there to just listen to Grant Cardone or listen to uh, Ray Lewis speak that, you know, I had Les Brown speak at one of my uh, wow. uh, conferences. I love Les. Um, you can, it's on YouTube. Uh, yeah, that was in 2012. He came, okay. he spoke. That was awesome. But that wasn't the event. Right. The, the event was, you know, getting all of our top producers. We had a whole a, a, a venue like you have. So there's a lot of, a lot of specific details you're going to be able to pick out of this, that if you truly want to be an eight percenter, then you've got to invest like an eight percenter. We invest millions, millions of dollars to keep our businesses running. doesn't mean we're always profitable, but we know that we keep those investments going out. And, you know, so everybody wants to make the, make the big bucks. They want to do the big volume. They want to get the recognition, but they don't want to spend the money. Yeah. And that's what it really comes down to. If you're, you're not willing to spend the money, you know, maybe there's some other businesses, network marketing businesses, you can not spend a lot of money and it's just sweat equity. But in this business, you've got to, you've, you've got to be willing to invest in your business. And I believe that, you know, there's no, no question that, you know, when you ask me to be a sponsor, I'm like, uh, thank you. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> absolutely. I want to be a sponsor. Are you kidding me? So, um, you know, that's the attitude. I think that, you know, the agents that are out there selling or if they want to recruit and build agencies or they want to one day become their own IMO and be those, be the next, you know, 50 million, hundred million dollar life insurance, uh, IMO, then, yep. you know, you, you, you got to start small and start investing small. And this would be a small investment to be able to help you get to the next step. Um, uh, but you know, that, that would be the main one. There's the other one that popped up in my mind would be, um, um, that, that, there was two, there was two reasons. My mind just went yeah, back yeah. on the second one. Dude, the first one was good enough that. for me, bro. The first one was incredible, you know? Yeah. yeah. Um, what would it be with the second one, which I think I just outsold, or maybe I answered my question on the second one, but, um, yeah. So I, I think, I think that ultimately it's the, the only reason that, oh, the second one would be they're scared of their upline. Mm. So they work for, they're a captive agent and they don't want to admit they're a captive agent, but they're an independently captive agent is what I call them. Um, and their IMO isn't going to be there and they're scared to, uh, or they're being talked out of going because they're worried they're going to get recruited while they're there. And so that would be, be maybe this you know the second reason why because this is this is blasted out there you know i mean yeah. everybody's no know, knows about this you should have in my opinion you know after this event tens of thousands of people at the next one and i think that you know um a, a lot of it's gonna you know there's in the insurance world especially the old school insurance world everybody's so scared about you know getting your agents recruited from you, you know, they're getting poached from another. If you've got to worry about that, then number one, you haven't built the relationship that you should have built with them. Amen. And you're not bringing any value proposition to them. So you're just pimping them. <laughs> so yeah. 
if, if, you know, if you're worried and you're telling your, your agents, don't go to that, it's going to be a waste of your time, you know, uh, then, then, you know, <laughs> you got to break, you got to, you got to be bold and you got to say, you know what, I got to, if I were to go to Grant Cardone's, one of his, his seminars, you know, uh, would they be opposed to me going to one of those? Or, you know, so because this is going to help me in the life insurance market, or what I do, you're scared and you're talking me out of going to this. So that would be the second thing that I would see is these highly uh, controlling, independently captive distributions uh, and, and, and just saying, don't go to that. So those are the two things that I would see off the top of my head. I love that. Thank you, buddy. That's really good. And you know what? If you want to meet Sam Wolf, president, managing partner of AmeriLife HPS, panel speaker, then guess what? You got to get to Nashville. You got to get to Nissan Stadium October 26th and 27th. And I'm telling you what, you're going to have a good time meeting this dude, getting to know Sam. Dude, Sam, thank you very much for the interview. Thank you for being on and can't wait to see you in Nashville, buddy. Absolutely. Thank you. And I appreciate being a part of it and being invited to be a sponsor. And, um, you know, I'm, I, I wish you, obviously, all of the luck and success from this. And um, I can't wait to, to be there. I love it, buddy. Thank you so much for being on. If you haven't grabbed your ticket, go to 8percentnation.com to grab your seat. Again, VIP's already sold out. Again, 8percentnation.com to grab your seat. Sam is going to be there, dude. Thanks again for being on, man. Have an incredible rest of your night. Hope to see everyone Absolutely. on stadium. Thank you. Thank buddy. you.